Ask Dan Schneider. Marsha asked me, Dan, I've enjoyed and found informative your Dan Schneider video interviews. What's been the most frustrating thing about it and what's been the most rewarding thing? Well, I think obviously the most rewarding thing is the easiest, so I'll answer that first. The most rewarding is that you're having good, intelligent conversations with individuals. And uh, I get emails like yours from people who enjoy them uh, and learn something from them. That's the most important thing, learning. The most frustrating thing uh, I've talked about many times, and that's what I call critics who come on who use the like-dislike axis. Um, in so many shows, people will talk, well, that's my favorite, this, my favorite film, that's my favorite book, uh, I like this the most. Even when I've delineated you know, the quality, people cannot get away from their own subjective biases. So that is an extremely frustrating thing for me. Um, uh, an ancillary thing that's frustrating uh, along with that is that so many of the people that I do interview, um, they, uh, I'll ask them a direct question and they won't have an answer for it. Um, uh, you know, they'll, they'll sort of pussyfoot around, you know, uh, and, you know, I'll talk about something and they'll say, no, just yesterday I did a show on Godzilla uh, and I talk about Godzilla's revenge and how uh, it's, you know, about uh, pedophilia, basically. The the real villain of that piece is the old man who's lustily leering after the young boy. And no one, no other Godzilla critic has ever even talked about this. Yet it was so obvious to my five and six and seven year old friends when we saw this film back in the 70s. That's how far ahead of, we were of critics nowadays. So that's a frustrating thing. Probably the most frustrating thing, I guess, is the lack of technical skill. A lot of the people I interview are older academics, and these academics, aside from being often out of touch with uh, the real world, they don't know how to operate Skype, or they don't know internet connections. One guy that I uh, had an interview with uh, on a race and sexual identity show a month or so ago was uh, trying to Skype with me from the middle of a lake in northern Ontario, and his reception was terrible. Other people, too, don't just, you know, buy a nice little, uh, uh, like, Logitech webcam that I'm recording this uh, with. And so it's frustrating um, because some of the shows haven't been totally ruined, but they've been, you know, sometimes uh, quite lessened because of the technical lack uh, and just the lack uh, of enthusiasm that some of these people have. Um, but most of them have been very good. You're you're not going to find uh, interviews from old TV shows or podcasts or anything that are anything like it. Um, you know, there was a, a fellow who I interviewed for a debate, and I've had some problems with my uh, visionary or fraud debates uh, because the guys have refused to debate, uh, you know, in vociferous terms. My next one on Noam Chomsky I'm hoping to get by maybe early next year, but I had three anti-Chomsky guys and one pro-Chomsky guy uh drop out. But I did have a debate on Ray Kurzweil and the Ray Kurzweil, the pro guy who has his own podcast, you know, was kind of pissed off uh, about uh, uh, the fact that, uh, uh, you know, he, he claimed that the, the video and the audio weren't that good, although he had one of the better video and audio feeds himself. The other guy who was part of that debate had a bad video because he didn't update his, uh, you know, get a new webcam. So, uh, he saw the the pro Kurzweil guy sort of slagged on the interview when promoting it, which is really kind of, you know, uh, not cool. But, you know, then again, if you compare, you know, the subjects that he talks about versus what I talk about, there's absolutely no comparison. He's sort of a techno geek talking with people who are not particularly knowledgeable about things outside their small little purviews, and he doesn't ask the deep probing questions that I do. So, you know, you have to take things with a grain of salt. So there's a handful of the frustrating things that I've had to deal with in the interviews. So thanks for the question.